I think education is about hope. When people are in difficulty, it's education, planning for the future, thinking that you might have a job, the prospect of something that can uh, deliver opportunity to you and your family. It's education that gives hope. And so I believe that one of the most important thing we, things we can do is to make sure that, for example, the million refugees who've come out of Syria can get the chance of being educated in countries like Lebanon. And that's why we've been trying to develop a program, double shift in schools, where in the morning the Lebanese children are educated, in the afternoon the Syrian children are educated using exactly the same schools and delivering quickly the opportunity for what would be half a million children from Syria to get education in Lebanon. What the region needs is to develop its road, its rail, its power, its electricity, its hospitals, its schools, and of course, particularly in this region, problems with water supply and other forms of power that need to be provided. Whereas China invests about 15% of its national income in infrastructure, across the region, traditionally, we've invested only 5%. There is a 100 billion gap every year between the amount of money we should be spending and the amount of money we are spending. Now, fortunately, the World Bank is developing a partnership uh, with the Islamic uh, Bank and other banks to take action to deliver this. The European Bank of Reconstruction and Development has now a role in the region to develop the public-private partnerships necessary for infrastructure. And the World Economic Forum has now a strategic uh, infrastructure initiative to try to bring public and private sectors together to deal with this problem, which is the initial funding, the early stage funding, the project planning stage funding, which often holds back infrastructure projects, and then to get people to invest in equity and then in debt that can move some of these great infrastructure pro uh, projects forward. And if we can do that, then that is the basis on which uh, a future of strong, balanced, diversified economic growth can be built. The ability to trade because you've got the transport infrastructure, the ability to deliver on a consistent basis manufacturing and other services because you've got power and electricity, and of course, the ability to solve some of the social problems, health, education, water, by providing proper facilities. This is a time of huge uncertainty and instability. So we meet in, in the context of these tragic struggles going on within the region. But we also have to focus people's minds on the economic opportunities ahead. This is uh, a region where population is growing fast, 350 million to 500 million over the next few years, where young people are the second fastest uh, growing group of young people in the world after sub-Saharan Africa, where at the same time urbanization is moving, 70% uh, urbanized in the next uh, few years. We tragically have a biggest, the biggest number of uh, proportion of youth unemployed and therefore we have to do something about the discontent and the disenchantment felt by young people who are entrepreneurial as we found from great surveys but don't yet have the opportunities to develop their talents. So it's a time where we must plan for the future, where we must invest in infrastructure to build that future, where we've got to give attention to the entrepreneurial and the educational and the employment opportunities that young people should have. And that's why it's also an exciting time for the long-term development of what is one of the great regions of the world. The countries that will succeed and become high-income countries in the long term are those who invest in their human potential, in the human resource, particularly in young people and their education. And the private sector has got a huge interest in this happening. The private sector needs the skills that young people can develop. And so the more we can engage the private sector, businesses, companies, foundations, right at the center of education, the better we have uh, as a chance uh, to make the region more successful economically. No country, in my view, will be a permanently high-income country unless it invests in education. And that's why businesses must be interested but also engaged in making this happen.